If you're a DIYer and you're trying to set your gains on the cheap, this right here is the best way to do it. I've been recommending it for years, but I can't recommend this tool anymore. I'll tell you why later on in the video. Gotcha Fix sent me this big bad oscilloscope. I'm going to compare it to the SMD device and go over some of the quirks and features in this scope. It does some things that these other tools do not do, and we're going to see if we can figure out if this thing's worth buying. Now, the first thing that jumps out about this oscilloscope is right up here on the top. Right here on the top are three spots where you can plug in your probes. There's two inputs and one output. So this thing has two oscilloscope channels. So in theory, you could observe two different signals at once. We'll talk about why you might want to do that later on in the video. Now, just like this oscilloscope here, this oscilloscope right down here is also a fully functioning multimeter. Back here on the back, there are removable batteries. If you take that case off, you'll find rechargeable lithium ion cells. Hopefully you'll never need to pull this off. Instead, you're just gonna plug into this USB-C port right here and charge it up when you're not using it. No need to fiddle with batteries. One of the biggest criticisms of this piece right here is that it eats batteries. I've not had that problem, but it's nice to just know you can charge something up and off you go. And that's the first thing you do when you pull this thing out of the box, you've got to charge it. So power it on, press here to go to voltage, hit the menu button, and you've got the option to calibrate it. And it's gonna say to unplug the USB and the probe and then press enter to continue. So press enter and it appears to calibrate. I don't know how it works, but it seems to work. A few other cool things about the device, when you're in voltage mode, it tells you which plugs to use. So these two are lit up, which corresponds to these two right down here. Now to test amperage, you press this button right here and it will tell you to measure current. You're gonna use these probes here and here. This is the 500 milliamp fuse. So these are for small current draws, less than half an amp. This one's for up to 10, which is just like pretty much every other multimeter or oscilloscope on the planet. I've turned on my power supply. It should be set to 14 volts. Let's probe the power and ground on the amp right here and see if we get 14 volts. 13.97, so that's Jim Dandy. Let's try it on the other one. It's gonna give us 14.03, so within a few hundredths of each other. If all you need is a multimeter, there are less expensive tools. What you really wanna know is the oscilloscope and you probably wanna know what all you can do with that signal generator function. So let's explore those a little bit now. What you'll notice is the probes have a different kind of connector. I've never used a connector like this before. Let me zoom in, see if I can get a shot up here on this camera. That connector is the same style of connector you would use if you had a lab grade bench top oscilloscope. Whereas this one right here uses the same probes you would use as a multimeter to use it as an oscilloscope. In the box, you get two different styles of probes. The first one are good old fashioned alligator clips, pretty straightforward. The one with the alligator clips is intended to use for the signal generator, the output. I wanna put those aside for now. This other one is intended to be used with the oscilloscope. And what you're gonna notice is it has a 1X, 10X switch. It's fairly normal for your scope to have a 1X, 10X switch as just internally built into the device. But this one has it on the probe, which is what you would expect for like a professional device as opposed to a hobbyist device. On this end, you've got a ground clip and on this end, you pull back this spring and you've got a little hook right there. And then on the other end, inside of this, there is a potentiometer because it turns out that probes like this have internal circuitry and you've got to calibrate the probe by adjusting that potentiometer. So let's take a look at what's involved in calibrating the probe. So we're going to connect our probe to channel one, just slides on and screws down. Pretty straightforward. Connect the alligator clips to the output. Here on the device, we push AWG. This is gonna give us the ability to change the type of wave. We can output a sine wave, a square wave, like say if you wanted to see what clipping sounds like, and a ramp. We can change the frequency, and this requires actually typing the frequency in. From a standpoint of using this as like a signal generator to try different frequencies out with your speakers, that's gonna be a bit of a problem because the menu is a little bit cumbersome. And you can change the voltage, five, three, two, et cetera. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip the ground to the ground and we're gonna hook the positive to the positive and we're gonna choose a square wave as our output. And then we will hit channel one. That's gonna give us our scope. Let's try hitting the auto button. All right, we got our square wave. The idea here is we're now going to adjust the potentiometer on the probe in order to make sure that square wave is a perfectly square wave. Right out of the gate, it's already a perfectly square, square wave. So there's nothing more for us to do here. That made life easy. Just for kicks and giggles, I wanna take a look at what our sine wave looks like. So I'm gonna go back into our menu and I'm gonna change that to a sine wave and go back to channel one. 
There we go, we got a nice beautiful sine wave. So we're all calibrated and set up and ready to go. We can now start setting gains with this device. So let's unplug the output, unhook that and set it aside. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna test the RCAs on this head unit. I've got the pigtail here plugged into the RCA outputs. So we're gonna go ahead and just plug this sucker up and I'm gonna compare it to the SMD device here. We're gonna plug it in as well. That's all wired up and ready to go. Now I'm just gonna turn the volume up and see what happens. Now we're at 27 out of 50, 28 out of 50. We're beginning to get a little bit of a wave here on the oscilloscope. The SMD device hasn't detected the voltage yet. All right, one kilohertz detect. And we are all the way up 50 out of 50 showing 2.2 volts over here. And you can see all the way up, this head unit doesn't clip coming out of the RCAs. We got clean waves here. Now, if you wanted to read the voltage, you would have to hit the menu button and choose VRMS right here, 1.4 volts RMS. Let's turn it back up. 1.6, 2.3, 2.6, 3.7, 4.2, 4.7. So it's showing 4.7, even though the SMD device is showing 2.1. Now I've got things wired up a little bit different. Got RCAs going into the amplifier and I have the SMD device on one channel of the amp and the gotcha fix on the other channel of the amp. And I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and turn the gain up and we'll see if we can pick up clipping. Let's start by turning on the head unit. And of course, immediately we get a detection over here. We've got 15.6 volts, a 1000 Hertz signal detected. Over here, we have 14.2 volts. So a little bit off, this one might need calibrating. There's a calibration function in it. So I'm gonna turn the gain up and I'm gonna zoom in tight so you can see what's going on. Okay, we got distortion on the SMD device and you can see on the oscilloscope, we don't have a square wave yet, so we're not technically clipping, but we have a bunch of fuzz. That fuzz is high frequency switching noise. And if you listen real close, you can actually hear a humming noise coming from the amplifier itself. I'm gonna grab the mic, pull it off my shirt here and see if I can get it closer, see if you can hear it. But what's cool is the scope actually lets you visualize that noise source. So this needs turning down, obviously. So we'll turn it down a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna turn it up instead and see if I can get a square wave. Let's go for broke. There we go, we're squaring it off now. Got some big nasty clip and there you go. That's what it looks like when it's nasty. So there you go. The device can easily be used to set gains and actually let you see something that the SMD device can't. It can let you see that high frequency noise that comes from the amplifier. But if all you're doing is trying to set the gains on the amp, a less expensive oscilloscope is what you need because this one is kind of overkill. This is a three-in-one multifunctional measurement instrument. This one has an 80 megahertz oscilloscope and the multimeter is a 6,000 count multimeter. It has two input channels, so with a second set of probes, it can measure two channels simultaneously. That 80 megahertz bandwidth is really overkill for audio usage. That's gonna get you up into frequencies that, well, Music stops at 20,000 Hertz. So you probably wouldn't buy this just to use it to set gains, but you might buy it to use it for some of the other features. And that other feature is the signal generator. It's a tone generator. And I'm gonna run some tests with the tone generator that the manufacturer told me specifically not to do. They said that it's not intended to drive a speaker. But my thought process is if this thing can put out a 100 Hertz tone, then you can use it as a test device. Say you're working with a harness and you're trying to figure out which wire goes to which speaker. Maybe you could use it for that purpose. So I'm gonna set that up now. All right, so I've got it set up in tone generator mode and I'm gonna try to connect it to the speaker. We'll start off by connecting the negative, positive. And there we go, it's making sound. So we're playing 100 hertz tone, seems to be working just fine. There's a square wave. Let's try changing the frequency. All right, there's 500 and we'll go to okay. So absolutely, I don't see any reason why you couldn't play a 500 hertz signal and use this as a tone generator for testing purposes. So here is the dilemma. I have to make product recommendations. That's what you watch me for. 
to get my take on it. It's a cool scope. It does a lot of neat stuff. It's got multiple channels. It has an output. It, it has the ability to do some things that you can't do with the less expensive scope. And this is to read those really high frequencies that we don't really need in car audio. So I doubt that I can convince any of you to go out and buy this, especially because this thing is just a little bit on the expensive side. If you do want to buy one, there is a link and a discount code down in the video description. I'll also give you some links to everything else that I've used here in the video. But I can't recommend this one anymore. And the reason why I can't recommend this one is because they don't sell it anymore. But here's the good news. This company right here, Gotcha Fix, Gotcha Fix, Gotcha Fix. It's got to be Gotcha Fix. <laughs> Right, that's gotta be it. Sells one that looks exactly like this one. It has a lower sampling rate. It can't read the ultra high frequencies the way this one can, but we really don't need to for audio purposes. So you can go out and buy this one and it's really cheap. Cheap enough that I don't think you should buy a multimeter for setting your gain. Now, if you do wanna use a multimeter to set your gain, you've gotta calculate a target voltage. I've got a voltage calculator on my website. I'll be sure to give you a link to that website down in the video description. And right up here is a link to a video on how to set your gains. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.